Hey everybody, we're live at day three of the Cloudways Black Friday Cyber Monday Prepathon, BFCM Prepathon. Today I have the great pleasure of talking about top practices for blazing fast websites. I know it sounds like a cheesy little topic and whatnot. It's critical for us to be able to be having blazing fast websites. It's the expectation people don't have patience. They're going to jump right off and do other things. We want to help educate you about what's available out there, what are best practices, what are tools, what should you be doing day in and day out to make sure that you have your blazing fast website. Quick introductions. I'm Robert Jacoby, Director of WordPress. I've been uh, in the WordPress open source industry for decades, and it is uh, my pleasure to be host for this panel. We have a number of great folk. I'm going to start through. Uh, one, two, three, four, and let them introduce each other uh, themselves. We'll start with uh, Bjorn. Bjorn, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, my name is Bjorn. Um, I'm president and founder of WP Learning Lab. It's a little YouTube channel you might have heard of, um, focused on WordPress. And I got started building websites before WordPress was a thing back in 2004. And then they're just straight up HTML, CSS websites. And then when WordPress came around, I started building WordPress sites, and that was in 2008. And since then, just trying to get better and better. Every day I learn something new, and I've learned over the years through experience that having a fast website is super important. And that's why this topic is super important. Even though Robert said it might be cheesy, it's still really important to have a fast website. And that's it. And next, oops. I I'm trying to figure all the stuff out in real time. We have shy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Bjorn. Uh, you might have been you might have been shy briefly. That is, that is okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Hey, hi. My name is Shai Todel. I'm a, a head of web optimization in speedsize.com. Uh, three times winner in a, a worldwide uh, perform word, WordPress uh, performance contest held by Cloudways. Um, I have a blog, wayshaitodo.com, and this is what I do every day, pay speed optimization, core web vitals, and stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Shai. Let me, let me make sure I can get this absolutely right. We are live. Mistakes will happen. They will be all my fault. No one worry about it. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's drive to who's our... Oh, we got Sabrina next. Fantastic. Hi, Hello, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. Hi. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Sabrina. I'm from Kiev, Ukraine. I do performance optimization for work and for fun sometimes, mostly for fun. <laughs> um, so like many of us, I started building websites a long time ago. Then somehow I got into WordPress, start, started building websites. Then I figured out that it's not enough just to build a website. Also, I was uh, involved in building a lot of sites with WordPress multi-site. I realized that it's not enough just to build a website, but it's very important to have it work stable and properly uh, during um, hard load times. Uh, it happened to me many, many times that something I've built was crashing when there was a lot of traffic on the website on the, uh, during the periods before uh, holidays and so on, like now. So that's how I became performance expert. I started to figure out uh, how to make it stable, not only to make it work when there is no one vis visiting a website. Uh, I used to work for WP Rocket, uh, for XWP. I mainly it's my day work to make websites load faster. I mainly work with uh, uh, other WordPress agencies uh, to speed up uh, uh, their clients' websites. Mm, in my free time, <laughs> I contribute to WordPress by organizing, by organizing events. For example, last year I was uh, uh, at WordCamp Europe organizing team this year as well. Um, this is who I am. It's lovely to meet and to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Again, just playing around with our live feed. What could go wrong? Uh, next on our list, of course, Hugh from Excel. Let me uh, get you full and live. There you go, Hugh. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, dear. How horrible. G'day. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yes, I'm Hugh, Hugh Gibson. Um, I've been in e-commerce for 26 years, would you believe it? Uh, with a uh, static site generator under Windows was the original product uh, here in the UK. Uh, so I've got a long experience with uh, e-commerce uh, in a different environment to WordPress, uh, but basically um, static sites. And then recently, in the last couple of years, we decided to bring some of our technology uh, and experience to WordPress. And so we developed a plugin which is in the whole area of speeding up product filtering in WooCommerce. And um, so, yeah, we've I've got experience of tuning sites out of WordPress, um, but then also bringing new technology, if you like, to the WordPress area, which is sort of like a game changer. I'm CTO of the company. I like getting my hands dirty and optimizing things in general, um, but also yeah, run the team who've built the product. Thank you so much, Hugh. Let's get us all back on the same page here. Uh, for all those in attendance, uh, we've got a very simple thing. Yes, you can win Amazon gifts or gift cards all of that fun stuff. Details are in the comments. Uh, share, like, and, uh, you know, take part of our presentation and panel. Let's dive into our questions for our fantastic audience here. There's Sabrina again. Our agenda. Why will customers not wait? Blazing fast web site best practices and then of course recommendations so as uh, a host of this adventure uh, i'm going to throw out a lot of questions to our fantastically prepared panel and expert panel and we're going to kick off with if the website load time exceeds two seconds what are the chances we're wow. losing potential customers ah uh, boy bjorn yeah i mean you're the one who's looking most excited about this question. I'm super excited. I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> I'd say there's a 100% chance you're losing at least one customer if your website loads slower than two seconds. Um, according to Kissmetrics, 47% of people expect a site to load in less than two seconds. So if you're loading and slower than that, then obviously you're losing a lot of people. Um, and every second you go slower, the more it hurts. Apparently, um, Amazon did a study that they have just an amazingly optimized website. And they did a study that if their load time is just one second slower, they would lose $1.6 billion over the course of a year. I'm so, Bjorn, I'm so happy you brought that up. That is one of my favorite statistics of it's, all time. It yeah. is crazy huge. And it is. But I'm willing really to bet none of us are at that level. I'm Sorry. willing to bet none of us are at the Amazon level for revenue. And so it wouldn't affect us to that degree. But the point is, the faster your website is, the better your customers or the happier visitors are going to be with your website and the more potentially you have to generate sales. Obviously, you have to have a good sales process as well. But for them to even see that, they have to, you have to have a fast website that they don't want to bounce from. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Sabrina, thoughts on that? I might sound as not very popular uh, opinion here, but I think it's very much depends on what are you doing and in which area you are and who are your customers. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm just thinking just recently, my mom is ultrasound doctor, right? And she wanted to go to um, uh, online courses for the ultrasound doctors. And it's very uh, narrow specialized courses, like one of a kind. Right. The site was very, very slow. It was almost unusable. But we spent about two hours trying to register to sign her up to that courses so that she can go and pay them money. Right. So she's a potential customer. She is uh, she is uh, taking two hours of her life and my life to sign up for that courses. And she doesn't. Um, <laughs> it wasn't that the website was slow. It wasn't even the main issue, but it only happens when the website serves something so unique, so wanted by the specific audience that they are going to go through seven, seven circles of hell to get there. 
the thing is that the, that most of the websites, most of the businesses, they are not like this. They are nothing like this. They are not like Amazon, right? And they are not nothing like this, where their customers know what they want and they are going to suffer to get it. Most of the businesses are somewhere in between, and I think it's very important to know what your customers are what they expect and sometimes it's very important to know where they're from for example because their expectations might depend on their location on their devices and also on their age um, i get i think that um, the main thing in performance optimization in general is the user experience um, approach where you know who are your customers and as Bjorn mentioned um, this is just one part of the whole user experience side speed if your entire sales processes is not designed well it's not gonna help you if your main landing page will be blazing fast if if after it loads fast uh, the customer can't get to your sales or can't fill in the contact form or something like this this is a part of the entire experience Boy, you are the contrarian, uh, Sabrina. And we could all be so lucky as to have a service that no one else can deal with. <laughs> but so many of us are, you know, you know, competing against other folks all the time. So suggestion one, have a business that no one else uh, can compete with you in. Then That's site, ideal. Then, then site speed doesn't matter, right? And then performance doesn't matter. But... I guarantee in, you know, if not three months, 30 days, there'll be a competitor who'll be able to do that quicker, faster, better, right? I'm going to go with right. <laughs> right. Um, Hugh, you do a, a bunch of interesting e-commerce work at Excel. Uh, how, does, how, how does this uh, tie into your experiences? I just wanted to comment, uh, Bjorn, you mentioned uh, Amazon, and it seems to me that that's the competitor for so many of the sites. It's just so easy to, to order. They've made it so sleek, and which is why they turn over so much, though. That 1.86 billion, was it? You know, is that a very, is that a half a percent of their turnover? I, I, probably a very small percentage of it, but... Very small. You know, it's, yeah, very small. But it is the competitor to, to a lot of the sites with the... Um, yeah, the historical product that I've come from, we have a lot of small sites and they, they do compete and they do have to make themselves fast to uh, not lose uh, the customers to the easier shopping experience on Amazon. Of course, there are people who would not order off Amazon because they don't want to be uh, feeding, uh, feeding that, um, well, I won't use any phrase there, but uh, um, so, from our experience, it's a static site generator for our old product. Uh, we run those, um, of course, they're, they're very fast websites. So uh, we have a sort of advantage from, from that sort of product. But one of the things that we had to do was invent ways of, uh, novel ways of implementing functionality. So the issue we had when we, a few years ago, we had to introduce product filtering quite a few years ago. We ended up doing it in the browser. We didn't have a database on the server because it's not a dynamic site. It's not a. It's not driven from a, you know, PHP and um, uh, MySQL. So that ended up being really fast, and so that's the technology we brought to to uh, WooCommerce um, was actually doing filtering in the browser. And there are so many instances where actually that has a huge huge advantage. So many filter plugins you click an option and it goes off to the server and it renders a completely new page. It might do it via an Ajax call, but it still is there's a delay while it goes off, gets the HTML, puts it back into the page. And so if you can do that filtering in the browser, that sort of common action, yes, I want to zero in on the products that I want, then it can respond much more quickly. So now that's the perspective that um, we bring, we've got lots of ideas on how that can be uh, used and that sort of technology can be um, can be brought in. That's a, that's a brilliant point and it ties in very nicely to what Sabrina was saying is 
you know, it doesn't matter if the homepage shows up in two seconds. What about the rest of the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That product filtering, product searching, and some of that can be done, you know, on browser or all this good tech stuff that I hope uh, Shai will, uh, you know, let us know more about. <laughs> the, before we forget what the question was, you know, how, how does that how does that two second metric resonate with you, Shai? Uh, I think, um, like Sabrina says, but also like Bjorn says, it's important, but there are more issue, more things to to consider. But I don't care right now about the other stuff. Let's give the user the best user experience. Google ranking um, uh, wants also to have the LCP as fast as much as you can. There will, there will be no CLS, there is no shifting and stuff like that. So page experience matters for the SEO, for the real users. So basically we need, we need faster sites, especially on mobile by the way, because most of the people uh, are, uh, are mobile, uh, uh, surfing from the mobile. So it's more important. And if you will, if you will put on your sites um, images and videos to, uh, to bring more, um, more interactivity or more user engagement, um, it will look nicer, but we need to do it faster. So this is some things, uh, the, the things that we, um, uh, that we are doing uh, to optimize, but it's important. Yeah, that's a great point about mobile. And, and, and really, I'll, I'll take it one step further and say internationalization. Uh, you know, how do you make sure you're reaching your core audience in the way that they're trying to get to you and being most performant, right? So you brought up mobile, you know, what are your experiences specifically with mobile? Um, most, uh, really, most of the sites that I, uh, that I encounter have uh, image issues uh, in on mobile because they are usually loading a very big image on desktop, 1,920 most of the time. And most of the time, this image also loads on, on the mobile. So basically, this is really something very, very uh, common to, to see. Uh, on top of the of other, other things, lazy load are, is very something that is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's all the way around. Or you don't do any lazy load, which you load tons of uh, images uh, on mobile, or you do have lazy load, but you do lazy load for everything, including the LCP image, which really hurts your LCP. So basically you, you, you cannot, you, you need to do something but in between. You, you need to do lazy load, but not for above default images. Uh, you do need to uh, to bring images much smaller for mobile, uh, reduce the size of the images without compromise on the quality. This is the, the company that I work on. Uh, the, this is what we do. Um, and, and, and a lot of things that uh, to do on every site, um, including fonts and, uh, and JavaScript and CSS and everything, uh, to basically the the goal is to reduce the number of requests and to reduce the the size of each request, even if it's JavaScript or CSS or font or the HTML itself and whatever. You are so spot on. Uh, I saw some uh, heads shaking there, especially from uh, Bjorn. Uh, I was nodding. Oh, you are not. Oh, yeah. You are agreeing, or you, yeah. you had something to, to no, add? I was, to that. I was agreeing. I was agreeing. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so, one step Sabrina, further? are you nodding as well? I, you know, I'm missing. <laughs> I'm missing a nod. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, we we see it on our static sites because you know we're running from 
what should be a really fast environment. But yes, exactly. People put in terrible images yeah. and wonder why, yeah, why is it so slow? Because you've got 10 megabytes of images being downloaded, you know, and it's just, it's just, well, uh, I, it's, I, I, it's, it's I need all my optimization products. 101, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, I need all my products in 4K, even if I'm on my phone, right? <laughs> it's 8K because now. you're a photographer. Yeah. And this yeah. is the art. Yeah, we, we do have a client who likes to have things showing really nicely because a lot of his customers are using iPhones. So it's expensive products and uh, they're more than half of his uh, sales are through mobile and mostly iPhone. And uh, so he likes to have everything retina, you know, double display. So it's a 400 image display to 200 pixels. Um, but still, was, you know, it was a quadruple at this point. You just yeah, <laughs> but still, you know, you can. You, there's so many images that can be optimized so easily. WebP, AVIF, even with JPEGs, so much that can be done just to um, optimize those within that old format. And of course, you know, you've got fallback if you need it. So. Oh, you, you you are jumping to the head of the class. We have two more or three more really big questions around that. So s save all that optimization for the end of the conversation. <laughs> I, I want to add something. Um, yeah, the, in, on e-commerce, you are not selling products. You are selling the images of the products. Okay? And, and this is something because if the images are very big and someone needs to wait for them or if they are very blurry and uh, it's hurt the, the the sales so it's like window shopping but the drapes are down so you, you have to wait until someone pulls the drapes up until you actually see what the product is right yeah. there's always a balance yes okay thank you uh we're gonna jump to our our, our, our sort of next question here so we got our two seconds uh, how often do you conduct a website performance test? I like to conduct them monthly. Um, I really hope you guys, uh, you folks have, uh, better, uh, opinions and comments on that. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, our, okay, Sabrina, you like to do this for fun. So yes, I assume you do this every day. <laughs> Define a website here because there are two types of websites, right? It's your client's website and it's your personal website. It's different things, absolutely, right? Your personal website can can produce layout shifts. It can be slow. It can be bad, has bad experience. But your client's website always would be fast. There would be no uh, layout shifts. You will be checking like paranoidically if there is uh, uh, first input delay is uh, in good shape, right? This, these are different things. No, I usually would check um, something when it really requires attention. So if there are no, if there is um, nothing in a um, Google Search Console in a Core Web Vitals thing, everything is passing. Google is happy. There are no like uh, disturbing reports in Google Analytics. There, is, there are no issues if. Um, lab tests show that are run automatically show everything is fine why would i waste my time and check it uh, manually again but if there is something off <laughs> i guess uh, i will be checking and trying to tune until it's done this is this is my button uh the, there is way too much of the g word going on uh so <laughs> google analytics google page speed all that uh, Sabrina, how often do you see that actually changing in, you know, on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual basis? You mean uh, in the uh, Google Search Console, they say that they uh, update eight, uh, every 28 days Core Web Vitals, but sometimes, I don't know, it's, uh, I noticed that it's, it very much depends on the website and what Google considers as major, um, major traffic on the website. Sometimes... Sometimes I see the situation when data in a Google Search Console uh, for Core Web Vitals is not updated for a month and a half, for two months, for some reason, without no reason at all. And sometimes uh, the changes are visible after a week, two weeks. I have no answer why it happens and Google doesn't disclose. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, 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 so just, just to restate, Core Web Vitals updates every 28 days. Yeah. They say uh, no. No, um, it's it's a twenty-eight eight days of uh, of of, uh, of of window. Mm -hmm. So it, it always it, every day it can uh, it can be calculated again, but it show you the uh, the twenty-eight days. Um, the previous twenty-eight days period. Yeah. So, so you check every day or every twenty-eight days. No, you can go and check like once in a few days because the day, data for 28 previous days is not updated every day. So if, I, if, I, if I said Core Web Vitals updates every 28 days or something like that, pay attention, check weekly. Does that sound right? Check weekly. I think it's like saying a uh, number of checks. You know, I. <laughs> um, I'm taking I... your advice. I'm taking your advice right now. I'm going to throw it on yeah. the banner, and everyone's going to see this. So all this right. is all. This is all on Sabrina right here. Okay, I'm Oops. always the person who says don't freak out too much about website your website speed because you know sometimes like people live happily and and uh, uh, peacefully without knowing their website is slow. Then they suddenly figure out that their website is slow, and now it takes over all their life. They're checking their data all the time. They're very nervous about this. They hire people like me to make it fast. <laughs> Which is a good thing, of course. But I mean, you can do you can do things without being over over stressed about it. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, the overstressing, uh, Bjorn. Thoughts? Um, I think overstressing is bad. There's only so many hours in a day. Um, I feel a big crush because I have three kids. So I mean, there's only so much you can do work wise because I want to spend time with them as well. And most people have other priorities in their life, aside from checking site speed. Um, I actually <laughs> use automated tools that just, yeah. they, they check it every day. And not that I'm paying attention to it every day, but they just check it and I just go in and I look at the numbers and everything's fine. I just leave it. I agree. Uh, and, and, it, and get, and get the notification. On the tools. Sorry. And Sorry? get notification if it's dropped before under something or something like that. Yeah. And I make sure to check Use moni automatic way monitoring. I make checking I mean, the priority during shopping holidays, like say Black mm -hmm. Friday's coming. Maybe I should just make sure <laughs> everything's working as it should. Uh, uh, so Black Friday is Cyber Monday. We're about four weeks out. Uh, maybe folks should be checking yeah. today. This would be a good time. And there's still time to hire someone like Sabrina or Shai to come in and speed up your site if you need the help. <laughs> Just like Shay mentioned, and uh, the tool that will notify you when it goes under some certain point. I made a WordPress plugin exactly for this, that uh, is checking automatically the URLs from your website. It, it works from the dashboard, right? Because I made it for myself so that I won't be nervous. And um, uh, with the idea that you can put, for example, three seconds or two seconds uh, for LCP. And if it goes, for example, I know that it's three Three seconds is all right for this website, so don't notify me if it's uh, under three seconds. But do notify me if it's uh, if it goes up. Um, that was uh, the idea. I'm a little bit um, um, unsure to name my plugin because I haven't updated for a while. But the idea behind it was that it will notify me if on the specific website uh, the LCP will go uh, over the limit per set by me. Okay, Sabrina, you got yourself, uh, you are the first person to get in trouble for this. Acronym abuse, LCP for our audience. Uh, let's just content full paint, which is, which can be um, almost anything on your page, but it's the main thing on your page, uh, on the first screen can be um, slider if you have slider on your on your first uh, first um, uh, view above the fold can be um, a picture hero image it can be even a piece of t uh, text if you have text um, in two words it's uh, the, the most important piece of information on the screen and it's very interesting to 
figure out what LCP on your website is, because sometimes LCP can be nothing to do with what you think your LCP is. For example, uh, you can have, um, say, a slider on the first screen, and you expect that this will be, or, or image, and you can expect that this will be your LCP, and you work to improve its loading you make uh, the web the the image of the right size uh, you optimize images and so on and so forth and then if you run tests um, you may find out that lcp is not the image but for example cookie notice on the website right or maybe ad pop-up or something else and all your efforts, they are going nowhere. So I think the main, uh, where I'm going with this, that uh, LCP, right, it's one of the core web vitals and we all want it to be well optimized. But when you optimize it, it's very important to know that you're optimizing the right thing, that you define the thing that you are going to work on before you work on it and you spend your time optimizing it. I guess uh, we'll go to the tools right how, how what tools we use and everything because it goes to the tools what you use to define your lcp uh, you know sabrina thank you so much for making that transition so much easier what are the tools <laughs> because I mean, that's literally the question i mean there are so many ways to you know define you know how well is your website performing from low testing to uh of course all the google performance testing uh, I'm going to pick on Shy because he was quiet uh, in the last question. What are the uh, tools that you would recommend for, you know, performance testing? You know, how do, how do we know what we're doing is do, going well? Um, uh, the most important is a search console that uh, regarding the core web vitals because this is actually the most important thing, and not a, a, a score of Google PageSpeed Insight. But because Core Web Vitals are 28 days window, we, I am uh, the, 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 the very important uh, thing to check is Google PageSpeed Insight to see the, the LCP, if there is CLS, uh, stuff like that. Um, so PageSpeed Insight. Usually I'm checking mobile because desktop is easy to, to improve. Uh, but um, a Google page with inside. I am checking uh, most of the time with all um, um, uh, with the page speed insight. I'm checking also with GT metrics. I'm just very fond of that. Um, uh, the 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 filters, the sort, the the waterfall is very easy to use. I'm very um, I, I love this tool. Um, and and uh, and also there is a video so it's you can see if there is a cls you can pause the the video and uh, and tweak and go uh, forward and backward to see uh, where the, the things that are that are shifted and it will much uh, it will be very easy to 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 notice what is causing the cls for example so we have we have two tools that we need to be paying attention to already Core Web Vitals and GT Metrics. I'm gonna um, try. To Core Web that. Vitals and Paid Speed uh, and Paid Speed Insight. The uh, speed, for example. Uh, but the Core Web Vitals are the important ones because this is the what Google aimed for. Google doesn't check for the Google Paid Speed Insight score. It checks the Core Web Vitals. So this is the important. Uh, metrics to to check uh, to check, but so, the tools for that is PageSpeed Insight, GT Metrics, Web Page Test. Yeah. So we have that, web vitals. That's a Google, pro, you know, a, a Google thing. Uh, obviously, PageSpeed Insights is also a Google thing. GT Metrics is a totally different separate tool. Tool, uh, which utilizes a lot of the Google backend to uh, uh, provide, I guess, provide data for lack of a better term. Right? One, the, does the yeah. banner make sense to everyone? I don't know if they use Google data for their back end. GT metrics? Uh, you, you can I connect it exactly to... Uh, uh, GT metrics is using the Lighthouse, which... Oh, Lighthouse. Is, yeah. That's yep. what PageSpeed Insights is based on. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Exactly. 
So Ding for our dong. audience, GT Metrics is just a very uh, convenient way to to see the waterfall. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we're looking at the tools again, uh, just as a quick refresher. Um, Okay, Hugh, you're up. What are your <laughs> recommended tools? Well, it, um, exactly that. But one thing that we've had to explain to our customers is that Core Web Vitals is driven from actual users' experience. Mm -hmm. That's not sort of particularly clear sometimes. And they get totally obsessed with page speed and actually getting those, uh, those little indicators from the Lighthouse engine and so on um, at a certain level. But actually, it's from real users' experience opening the websites in Chrome, I guess, reporting the information back to uh, to Google. So, Sabrina, you mentioned seeing a cumulative layout shift from the cookie pop-up. Well, actually, in normal operation, that only appears once for a user. And if they're then going around the page or they come back to the, the site again, it never appears. So in the real world, for the Core Web Vitals, score that Google uses to, to do the ranking, that doesn't actually apply. It might feature in PageSpeed Insights because it misreads the, the cookie banner popping up with a delay as being a, a, a layout shift. Yes. Um, but in the real world, it, it doesn't actually matter. So that's just a sort of um, clarification that we've had to, to explain because people can get so obsessed with yeah getting that score so high but ignoring so, the actual real world figures. So Lighthouse is like the former Alexa. I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, Alexa is pretty much off the uh, map as an indicator, uh, uh, unless I'm wrong. I'm happy to be corrected. Pass on that. But uh, <laughs> it's basically there's that distinction. Google uses real world data from the customer's browsers and so some sites you go to not a very popular shop it says i don't have enough information don't have enough real world information yet for this site uh, but it does tell you in the page speed insights or whatever it is now that um yeah we've uh, this site passes mostly um well it so, uses um two components there's the there's the real world data that you're talking about and for sites that don't have enough traffic they have their lab data where they kind of take educated guesses at what the traffic, what the people who are visiting your site, what technology they would have and how that would load for when they don't have real world data. So it's, it's probably pretty accurate. Yeah. But Alexa, I'm not sure where Alexa fits into this. I never really used Alexa for much of anything. I, I, I think the ranking is, I think they closed down rankings at some point this year, but it's probably the closest thing to what we're talking about when it comes to uh, Lighthouse, which uh, you know, it was a similar thing. Like you'd log in, you'd have your extension or plugin or whatnot on your browser, and it would kind of push that data to the search engine so they knew how good or poor your site was going. So just another tool, but from an end user perspective. Uh, Sabrina, what are your recommended uh, website performance testing tools? Um, I just want to make it clear to those who are not very familiar with what we are talking here about. So there are two types of tests, right? Um, uh, real use experience, right? That we have in Core Web Vitals, but other tests, they are lab tests. Uh, and um, the main thing with lab tests, there are a lot of them. We mentioned a few, right? Uh, GT metrics, uh, page speed insights. Page speed insights uses uh, light um, house uh, technology, which is also used uh, in um, Chrome dev tools uh, in a Chrome browser. Um, some other um, tools are using Lighthouse as well. There are independent uh, tools like um, webpagetest.org uh, that use Lighthouse, but also uh, simulate, uh, simulate uh, testing um, from different uh, locations, from different devices. But uh, the main thing about lab testing, you can use any tool you prefer, but you cannot, you absolutely cannot compare results of two different tools you have to compare results of the tests that are made by the same tool and at the under the same uh, terms, under the same conditions. 
uh, because I see this uh, often when people run few tests in a few different tools or in the same tools in the same tool under the say uh, under different conditions and they try to compare but this is not right this is not scientific approach you want to run uh, tests under the certain conditions for example i would use wordpress uh, or i would use uh, webpage dot uh, webpage test dot org to run tests and i would set the the location i can pick the, the location the device and the connectivity type right so Whatever you said there, if you said there, California um, 4G um, uh, connectivity and iPhone, for example, you have to compare the results after you make any changes or tuning or anything with the same test under the same conditions. I think this is the main thing that, um, that uh, people should know about lab testing, that you have to always compare the uh, lab tests made under the same uh, conditions. Uh, that is a great point. Stay uh, consistent in your testing methodology, create a baseline and see if you're improving one way or the other. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just to paraphrase. Bjorn is stunned again. <laughs> stunned. <laughs> Um, there is another cool tool I just remembered I, I use a lot. It's called uh, waterfaller.dev. Uh, it's a lab tool as well. I like it because it uh, has uh, this um, division and uh, very convenient um, in lighting for LCP uh, first input delay and uh, layout shift. So when you run the test, you can see LCP highlighted and you can see um, at the same time the issues related to it. It's somewhat uh, uh, similar to what uh, PageSpeed Insights have in their interface. But um, in my experience, it's kind of um, closer to life. Uh, this lab test uh, shows better results that are more connected to the, to the real experience. It's called waterfaller.dev. Uh, can you drop that into the chat for the audience? Sure. Thank you so much. I, I focus on um, the waterfall, like like Shai was saying, because you, you can see what loads at what point and what's slowing everything down. <laughs> and so I, I try not to spend all day running tests on various tools. And like uh, Sabrina said, focus on one and just use one. Pick one you like. There's a whole array of them out there, but focus on one like the one you like, and if it has a waterfall feature where it shows you what's loading and when it's loading and what's taking longer than it should based on your experience. So you, you, it doesn't tell you what necessarily what's taking longer than it should, but with experience, you start to learn this is taking way too long, this component, this image or this JavaScript or whatever it is. And then you can address those problems specifically versus using just Google PageSpeed Insights where they give you the recommendations down below if you've ever been on that website testing a, a site, I find that to be helpful, but not as helpful as the waterfall, personally. Oh, so, so for the whole audience, I mean, when we say waterfall, we're, we're really yeah. talking about, you know, a waterfall. We're talking about what a waterfall carrot? running down a mountain. <laughs> all, the, all the requests, uh, one after the one, after that. So you can yeah, see it's whether like... it's something on your server, a giant, you know, 4K image for uh, a slideshow, or a third party, you know, JavaScript mm -hmm. request. Yeah, there, there are things on a website that can potentially block rendering of a website. So the website loads to a certain point and it won't load farther until that specific thing is loaded, quite often JavaScript. And so if you see in the waterfall, which is basically, um, it's hard to describe, but it, it shows, it's like a Kanban style of project management where it shows something happening and before, the next thing happens, the first thing has to finish. And then it, it, it goes down the screen, so it's a waterfall. It's, it's hard to explain. Uh, and they're blockers. Um, I mean, you can't do, yeah. you know, you, you can't get your burger until you actually order it, until you actually drive up to the McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have, there, there are certain steps you have to take yeah. before you can actually have something yeah. magically appear. It's a good metaphor. <laughs> I'm just hungry. And the, <laughs> the waterfall helps you identify 
those those things that could be slowing down or blocking your website load and they can address those specifically uh and in my experience a lot of that is you know third-party javascript calls right i mean yeah. you, you can see that everything from whether you're doing google analytics to pulling up you know facebook uh analytics or uh uh comment uh forms all that kind of stuff uh mm -hmm. you, folks should kind of have that in their mindset about you know what services are am i using it and are those services performant anyway mm -hmm. jump in the gun uh you know we are flying through this and there's so much more to talk about so we have our next question what are your recommended tools for website performance testing did we just run through that yeah. my slide yeah. off thanks Next, thank you. What are your recommended best practices for improving page speed? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Shai. I, since you uh, told me next, you have to answer first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's it basically to reduce the number of requests, to reduce the, the size of requests. It and it's all around. It's it uh, you need to to check and handle the images and the fonts and CSS and JavaScript. And uh, um, and it it could be third party scripts or um, it can be uh, you need to to check with uh, about the lazy load of the images and to exclude the, from lazy load above the fold images and to reduce the 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 font weights for example if you do if you are using um, several font weights and for just a, a small thing, you are using a different weight, maybe it's useless, maybe you don't need it, and we can save a request for that. Uh, a lot of things like reduce unused CSS, which is a lot of uh, things uh, that, you, that very help the, the optimization. Basically, there are a lot of things. You do need a very good basis uh, regarding the hosting, like um, we will later on, we will talk, but uh, stay away from the shared hosting. But uh, uh, but uh, w even on a very fast server, the site still uh, be very slow just because there is no caching. Or uh, so this is, an, of course, this is, this is a, a very basic issue uh, or thing to to do, uh, but. Uh, as I said, there are a lot of uh, things to, to consider. Um, like, as I said, there are a lot of uh, things. Uh, CLS uh, the, that Google doesn't like, so it needs to be corrected. So basically, there are a lot of things to do. There's so many. I, I agree so, with Zach. OK. I, 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 I'm, and I'm, remove I'm, every, whenever possible, yes, of course. So, okay, uh, so, so we probably have many opinions on this, uh, given what Shai was. Shai, what's the number one best uh, practice? Just one. Caching. Without that, uh, uh, the site will be slow no matter what, because the TTFB, the time to first fight, will, will be enormous. But, but, after, but this is the basic. After that... Handle the, the the images, for example. No, no, you only get one. Okay. It's going to get more. Difficult. It's going to get more difficult as we get through every other panelist because they're going to have to pick one that no one else picked. <laughs> it's like Survivor. <laughs> so, so so we have caching as a recommended best practice. Uh, I'm going to put Hugh in next, so that means. Uh, Bjorn and Sabrina will have to be sweating it out to figure out what their third and fourth best practices will be. Hugh, uh, what's your next best practice for improving yeah, well, speed? Yeah, well, yeah, it's going to be easy for Bjorn and Sabrina because, of course, I got to plug our product, which uh, you mentioned caching. Um, filtering, if it's done normally, if you like, every time you click a filter option, goes back, gets the page from the server. It's an interesting combination of filter options that that particular person wants. It's un probably unlikely to be in the cache. So caching isn't going to help in that situation. And then it does get put in the cache, but only one request for that. So the cache flushes it. So 
that's why you know Axel product filters filtering in the browser means that you're not hitting that problem of the cache not being um, not actually helping out with the filtering. So but, I mean that's that's got to be I'm, I'm a company man, got to be the uh, the suggestion. So, in, so you're, uh, kind of, you're kind of cheating, Hugh, because you're talking about caching, but whereas yeah, the shy but not caching, not side side being caching. so good. Yeah, you're, you're talking about browser side caching. Yeah, I guess it's Jamstack. It's Jamstack filtering, basically. So um, that's what I'm heading for. Yeah, Jamstack technologies. Now, uh, who, who's up for number three or who's up for number four? Sabrina on can best go. Friends? I'm sorry, Bjorn? Sabrina can go ahead. Uh, okay, All Sabrina, right. you got number three. Recommended best practice for improving page speed. So... This recommendation will go to those who are developers and who are not, right? Because not everyone is developer. I think that, that the best practice would be to use logic and to ask yourself, do I need this? This will be the first question. And the second, do I need it right now? So <laughs> whoever you are, if you are a developer, if you're a developer, but also if you're a marketer or designer or just website owner, this is the, th the first thing you should be asking yourself. Do I need this at all? Like you're loading, you're, you're loading some stuff on your website. You're adding some new feature. You are adding new slider, new fonts. I don't know, whatever you add. Do you really need it? This is, this is the first. So you can go just go ahead and uh, inspect what you already have on your website and figure out what you don't need. Get rid of it. It will solve a lot of issues. And then the second thing, it goes to web developers, of course. Uh, is it needed right now? And this goes back to what we were, talk we were talking about, about waterfall. Most of the stuff is not needed to show the first screen to the user. It's not needed. It's only a small amount of um, assets, of resources we need to load to get this first picture, first, first uh, view. So it's, I think it's our responsibility as developers to serve what is needed as soon as possible and to delay everything that doesn't bring any use to the uh, website, visited to website user, to to delay everything else. This is my yeah. best recommendation. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna totally ruin one of the greatest quotes of all time. Um, you're all gonna get to see this on the banner live. Apologies. So Coco Chanel's shtick was, before you leave the house, take one thing off. So before you launch a website, take one thing out that you probably don't need. This is beautiful. <laughs> I would leave family. one thing that you need and take off everything else, not in terms of clothes, <laughs> but in terms of website. So Sabrina's version is even more extreme. Just keep the one thing that you really need to get done. You haven't seen my apartment. <laughs> Speed up. Fantastic. <laughs> so I just like empty spaces. <laughs> Okay, Bjorn, you're the last on the list. This better be the, 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 the best, single most important best practice for improving page speed. This is a high-pressure environment. You bet it is. Um, People have millions, billions of dollars on the line. It's Black true. Friday, Cyber that's Monday true. prep. So I feel like this is a loaded question because um, I feel like you can do all the caching and image optimization, all that, all the stuff you want. If your host is not fast, like you would be on Cloudways, it's not going to be as helpful because you, if you're on a shared hosting plan, which we're going to get to later, hopefully, if we, if we have time, um, your website loading is just not going to be as fast. You can have the super optimized website. It's not going to be as fast on a shared host as it would on a dedicated server, which is what Shai brought up as well. Um, it's not really optimizing, but it, it's, it's finding a smart place to host your website to make sure it loads, it has the potential initially to load as quickly as possible. And then what you put onto the site also matters. If you are a page builder heavy individual who likes to use Elementor 
or something like that to make all the fancy widgets and all that. Like Sabrina was saying, do you really need that? Would you be happy using just the WordPress Gutenberg block editor and don't use page builders? Or one step further, forget WordPress. Would you be happy just coding your website with PHP or ASP or whatever your preferred code is? And you'd be or HTML, just do it the old school sure. way, yeah. like you know, twenty five years ago. Just yeah, like make it. you founded a long time ago in Dream Dreamweaver. <laughs> oh no, don't say Dreamweaver. That's just not nice. <laughs> I started on Dreamweaver. It was great. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Sorry, um, so really, you put in? Over folks. <laughs> by the uh, by the way, by the way, the 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 thing that uh, I'm I talked about caching, it's not just uh, HTML caching or disk caching. It's it's the server caching like Vernish. It can, it's, it's the object cache pro or Redis uh, the, that to cache quali queries. There are a lot of layers, and this is something that I, uh, I really recommend. And this is why I like Cloudways because I have all these things together. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about Dreamweaver and all this fun stuff, we're going to bring back. You know, Oleg and his Dreamweaver and single picks uh, spacer gifs. Uh, miss all that fun stuff. Thanks, Oleg and Zach, for tormenting me from 30 years ago. Uh, we have literally minutes left. So there are two bigger questions. I'm going to let you see them all once. So we already went through our. So we have is a cash plugin uh, good enough? And what about uh, shared hosting? So caching and shared hosting. Caching to the round. left, shared hosting to the round. It is a speed round because we literally have two minutes left before I get the plug pulled. So who wants to dive in on? So we, we've covered actually a lot about caching. Uh, Shai, yeah. thank you so much for bringing, it, bringing up Object Cache Pro, Varnish, uh, you know, all these other tools that exist. Uh, let, let's uh, hit some of these shared hosting issues because a lot of folks are using shared hosting and they may not be ready for kind of the traffic that uh, takes a toll on shared hosting. Uh, Sabrina, I see some nods. I'll let you take that to start with. Sure. Um, my opinion here is the same. You have to know your customers and amount of customers on your website for most of the websites. Shared hosting would be absolutely not uh, not uh, the option uh, because it's just the basis where your website um, starts with. If the base is slow, whatever whatever next you do, it's hard to get through through. To, to, to good uh, results. But for some, shared hosting might be an option. I just think that most of the people who are watching us right now, they do expect some traffic during the holidays. They do expect some uh, load on their servers. So I think it's a good idea to go and to check how your uh, server uh, site performance is doing before you have these high periods. Mm, as a recommendation here, mm, Query Monitor plugin, uh, you can use that one. Um, you can install, activate it, uh, and just to see what it shows about server, uh, about um, the um, things, about things on server side. So if you have um, uh, issues there, you will see it. Also, most of the hosting providers and panels, they have uh, these stats telling you that you are reaching your resources. It's better to check this before high load periods. And if in your normal days, you are somewhat about 50% uh, of uh, resources, it might be a sign to increase those resources before, before, uh, before holidays. And so I'm going to run through this because we are really up against the hour. What is the uh, best way to uh, reach you and learn about what you do, Sabrina? Uh, Sabrina, Z Sabrina underscore Zaydan on Twitter. Perfect. Thank you. Hugh, get going. 
Tell us, uh, you know, how shared hosting is going to make our lives uh, more complicated. <laughs> yep, it's a loaded question. You said Hugh, right? Yes, I did. Sorry, we had a, uh, yeah, internet went for a little bit. Me, axel.com, A-C-S-E-L-L.com. <laughs> A-C, uh, say that again. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume yeah. he was good at at Excel. Uh, Bjorn, uh, if you could answer the question a little bit about uh, shared hosting and how can we follow up with you? Um, I like to per use an analogy. Um, shared hosting is like sharing a computer hard drive. You have your computer hard drive. You like to use it, but imagine if you have a bunch of other people using it at the same time you are. That's what shared hosting is. It's the hard drive in the cloud. And your website uses that to serve its data. And other people use the same hard drive. Um, so I prefer to not have shared hosting for that reason. I, I do use it for my lower traffic sites. But as soon as a, tra a site gets higher traffic, I go on dedicated hosting um, just because I don't want to share the bandwidth. Because you don't know when spikes are going to come. You can guess Black Friday, obviously. But you just don't know. So shared hosting is viable for smaller sites, not viable for larger high traffic sites. Oh, and you can reach me at uh, the best place for YouTube. WP Learning Lab is the channel, and that's me. WP Learning Lab. Thanks so much, Bjorn. Yeah. Uh, Shai, uh, let's let's bring us all home. Yeah, what do you think home. about uh, uh, e-commerce stores with shared hosting, and uh, how can actually, we get you? Actually, it's not just for e-commerce. I uh, in in my in three years ago or something, I had an account in two major uh, big uh, uh, hosting, shared hosting, and it was so slow for me. And I, I, and I just ended up with doing a comparison between several uh, hosting. And only after the, seeing the results, I moved to Cloudways. Um, and, and this is... Um, it's really stuck in my mind that it was so slow for me because it was very cheap and there is a cost to 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 get something cheap and this is the, the this is the reason I'm I'm not a fan of uh, shared hosting because they are giving you a, a very small um um, um uh, how is that they give you a, a, a less uh, things to do, or uh, or um, I don't know. The, the site is just <laughs> slow. I don't know how to say that. I, I like I, I like to think about it as getting the cheapest flight, uh, cheapest ticket on a flight, and then getting bumped because they oversold the flight. Right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's kind of what shared hosting is. Um, Shy, what's the best uh, way to uh, reach you? shytoda.com uh, oh, you well, you're going to have to spell yeah. that and put it in the comments because no I will problem. not be able to do that correctly <laughs> okay no problem <laughs> thank you so much everyone uh, honestly this could have gone like two to three hours longer oh shy you put that into the private chat I'm going to make sure that um, yeah. uh, folks please uh, all speakers please feel free to put things into the uh, public comments section so everyone can uh, make sure to be able to get a hold of you as easily and quickly, since we're talking about performance, as possible. Uh, thank you so much. I really love to talking performance. I love geeking out. Um, and, you know, we've hit some of the big things. Shared, Google, uh, you know, VPS. Uh, take that one thing off. Or, in fact, only have one thing. I'm, I'm loving what Sabrina, uh, how, how she spun that to make sure that we're really focusing on what we're doing and what your customers really need and, and not peppering our sites with tons of stuff. Bjorn, Shai, Hugh, Sabrina, thank you all so much. I even have the slide ready. Look at this. Thank, thank you, you all. Much. Nice. <laughs> thank you very much. You're thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week. I'm glad that uh, our audience could see us for our second annual BFCM Prepathon at Cloudways. Thank you so much, everyone.
Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Yes. <laughs> and, and go to the contest. You forgot to, to mention. Oh wait! Oh, I didn't. I didn't end the broadcast yet. Hold on. Uh, let me find that banner. Yeah. Uh, we do have our contest. Yeah. I'm depending on my uh, backstage team to throw these things up. I'm Continue. waiting for that. I know. We had it. Here it is. There we go. <laughs> Thank you all again. Have a great week and a very successful rest of the year. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.